My name is uh, Samir Parmar and I am an application engineer with the Machine Vision Group at CQSA. By now I anticipate that you have already seen the first and the second video and therefore are able to connect to the smart cameras and then are also able to acquire images which are good enough from the both 2D and 3D cameras. This video will basically illustrate the programming environment for both uh, the 2D and the 3D camera that use the same IVC Studio platform uh, or software environment for programming. So on the top black things that you see over here, these are the black image banks. They are used to store image data. On the right hand side, the images that you see, they are preview banks which show you the image data before and after an image. The programming steps are, sh are shown here in the tree view. The table is appearing on the bottom left hand side and all the tools are basically divided. We have about more than 100 tools but under image you will see all the image process image tools under region of interest all the tools that have to do with region of interest filtering tools uh, communication tools are found under communication input output tools are found under input output and so forth so we already have a an image that's visible on the top over here and uh, we can kind of see that I have purposely chosen an image that has got noise data so I can kind of show you the programming environment as well as the various capabilities of the uh, software suite that comes with this. So first things first after you have acquired an image is you want to define a region of interest uh, and this basically determines as far as uh, uh, what area do you want to do any analysis or evaluations on. So in this case I can uh, choose the entire region of interest. I could do it this way graphically or I could choose to just put down a fairly large number which would tell me that you know what's the maximum uh, width and uh, height for the field of view I'm working with over here. Once I have the region of interest then let's say I want to get rid of some noise then I can try some filtering tools and I can let's say use a tool called erode. If I erode I need to define my source bank which is zero uh, my row definition step my region of interest is two and I'll put my results in one if I execute that using F5 I get a result in, in bank number one if I double click and look at this uh, notice that noise has reduced and some places where there was noise pixels we now have missing data I also want to point out over here that this area where you see black black is considered to be missing data uh, uh, and this happens because of shadowing basically so at this point in time the camera is not able to see anything on the sides over here because uh, the laser never hits the side obviously and at this point at this point over here as the object is moving from uh, if the object was moving from right to left the laser is able to hit on this area but the camera never sees over here and that's why we are getting this missing data uh, this is not a very good image but the I have purposely done that to basically illustrate these various uh, things that you should be aware of when trying to acquire an image so once we erode, let's say then we want to do something along the lines of maybe uh, some measurements. So I can uh, uh, use let's say like a blob finder tool and I can define my source bank to be 1 now, my row definition step to be 2 and my destination bank, a different bank to be 2 as well. I can enter my interactive setup and now I can specify manual thresholds or I can say uh, define anything that's raised automatically or again I could say manually defining whatever I want to be able to pick up in terms of height thresholds and I could also define um, uh, thresholds in terms of the minimum blob area so if I know my object is going to be a certain size in this case I know that I have two blobs these are the X and Y centers and I have the areas then I can define that hey if I see anything uh, that's as small as 6000 or lower I know that's maybe noise or some garbage because the objects I'm expecting are fairly larger in size and I can decide to generate my blob image. Uh, you could sort them in any uh, order that you want to sort them descending or ascending by a vertical, horizontal or area if you want to and then you can dump the data uh, in any table index you want. So if I say 7 what you will see is basically starting from table index 7 I will have my X center, Y center area, X center, Y center area for each of the blobs. And then you could analyze them further. So I could insert a step called blob analyzer. 
and my blob finder step number here is let's say step number four um, and I could uh, choose my destination bank to be three and I could enter my interactive setup and now notice that this one um, it uh, does various types of analysis for you so you can create a bounding box around it you can uh, compute various different things you know the size of the bounding box the length the width uh, even the volume and the height if you want to uh, but you need to define what blob index you want to work with so if you if you have found multiple blobs you need to define the blob index so right now it's zero but I could choose to be one and now I'm doing analysis on one basically so when you have multiple blobs that you're expecting what you would ideally do is for example you would uh, in insert a for loop so all the programming tools are under program tab so I can insert uh, a step called uh, for over here before this step and I could insert an end thereafter and what will happen is basically I could say that equals s4 for step number four and r1 for result number one so it found two blobs so I want my four to start at zero and I want my for loop to carry on for uh, uh, this many times so and my blob index could therefore just be if I double click over here it shows me all the previous steps which have got results my blob finder step and uh, actually I want my for loop over here my loop index so what happens is if I my blob finder finds two blobs so therefore my for loop will go the first time error in step four I need to define uh, an end step over here so that's another way to look at over here when you get an error we also tell you where the error is the error is in parameter four right now the end step is not really zero but it's step number seven so I can execute my for loop and the first time the loop index is zero so it's gonna analyze um, the blob, blob index zero right and when you come back to it the second time now in the end step you need to provide the four step which is five so that it can jump back to the four step the second time the blob index is one so if I go back in the blob analyzer this time it's analyzing the blob index number one so in a for loop you can dynamically analyze any blobs you want and then you could uh, do various things with these results over here you could basically let's say under system we have for example a step called write to table this step can be used uh, to write any value that you want so for example if I want to write down um, the supposedly I'll choose the blob area over here so that is basically uh, step number six and the result is one that's the blob area and I could specify a table index let's say uh, three and if I write that you basically copy that value from there to the table now this is very handy because you could basically save multiple types of data in the table and then also most of the time when you want to communicate with the outside entity we have a number of communication tools over here uh, RS485 we have Ethernet row we also have um, uh, under uh, communication setup over here if I insert that particular step we have OPC as well as Ethernet IP but all of these uh, communication steps are basically exchanging data with the outside entity using the table so the data from outside comes into the table and the data to outside entity goes from the table so writing to table your results is very handy hopefully this gives you enough uh, exposure to the programming environment as far as how a programming environment works and uh, what the block format is over here step by step if you have any further questions please feel free to get back to us at 1-800-325-7425 followed by option 2 followed by option 4 thank you